so that's the mess we're starting with into our hydroponics project. I have already some old pipes here that are already pre-drilled for the hydroponics application. You can see some end pieces there that will connect then later on. And this is already there. Also, you can see I had this system already in use and mounted it to some, some outdoor wall. So I have this kind of wooden brackets or fixtures. It's uh, admittedly pretty yeah, wear and tear. Probably not, not the most solid solution and not the most best outdoor solution. It was just a quick fix back then. But let's see how far we can recycle those brackets, attach it with some new wooden structure here. It's all pretty uh, lightweight here, this, but um, also, yeah, it's uh, I'm, I have very limited space options here on the balcony. So I really need to take care how to make it in a very minimalistic way. You can see all my other plants around here where we will attach the automated watering system that we already uh, covered in other videos. Basic idea is using this pump here and it's 230 volt pump so I need to cycle this. It's not like any way with a PWM or controllable but um, at least we can uh, cycle it with on and off cycle, cycling the water through the system, taking a break so the water can drain again and then cycling it again. For the moment, this little basket or yeah, basin there will work as our, as our reservoir for the hydroponic system. It is admittedly way too small because if the pump is running, cycling the water through the pipes, this will eat up easily 20 liters. So this is, I don't know, around 50 liters. So uh, that's definitely too small. I need something bigger. Um, but again, space constraints and also just what I have available, get an MVP working and then we take it from there. So plan for the moment, basin there, pump in the basin, just cycle the pump on and off cycles and attaching those little wooden pieces here to the wooden brackets and then basically put it in place the pipes over there not too high up in the air i don't want it to be too exposed to the to the winds and rains we had some heavy rains in the last couple of days you can see even now we have dark clouds so i want it a bit sheltered and i can also cover it in case of uh, any storms coming so just get started So sorry for the shaky camera, um, but I'm just basically screwing, unscrewing the stuff with one hand, holding the camera with the other hand, uh, so that it is what it is at the moment. I have all my camera gear at a different location where I'm fil filming some other content, a different project, so sorry for that. But basically getting rid of all the old screws because the new concept will basically attach the wooden structure here on the, on the side and not um, here on, on the front. that's kind of what it's supposed to look like we have one row at the top and row one row at the bottom you can see that i basically mirrored the brackets so top one is a little bit to the back and the bottom one a little bit to the front so we are kind of like slightly minimizing the impact of shadows also the height is adjusted that the row can base uh, the pipe can basically run above the containers here of course this will cause uh, quite some shadow and i will move the containers a bit forward um, but also some plants probably will just grow um, beside it so i think that's a good option to have here to have it covered or push the containers completely forward so yeah we'll do the second bracket now or the second stand now and then probably 
call it a day um, before it was daylight and then we'll continue tomorrow. So that's kind of the setup. We have a top pipe here. There's the reservoir pump, pumping up the water, running through the first pipe, going down the other side, running back through the second pipe and back into the reservoir. Of course, need to attach this whole setup here to the to the railing and obviously um, the water tank needs a cover as well so to prevent uh, the growth of algae and also the complete monitoring setup needs to be put in somewhere sheltered so i can't put it right here probably further back here so that's it for the moment and let's see you tomorrow i couldn't stop myself and i quickly um, assembled a little bit more so now both pipes are in place over there i still have to cut the pipe since the diff the height difference is now different than before you can see i had a little bit of more of a height difference uh, in the past but i think it will be still fine for our letters and leafy greens to to grow here uh, in this with this distance as well so i decided to attach everything here with basically one one horizontal bar running along here and then basically attaching it with some some cable ties directly here to the to the railing i mean it's just a temporary setup but um, on the other hand there's nothing more permanent than a temporary setup so um, yeah i try to keep it simple but at the same time also kind of like at least fixed to a degree that it can withstand any kind of little winds or little storms i mean it's super light structure so it doesn't need to be very solid but uh, yeah let's see how it goes with this temporary setup and then we can reinforce it afterwards as soon as we're satisfied with the setup as well. Pump is there. Um, the, the pipe here is a little bit, the tube is a little bit too short. Um, let's see if this will work out or raise. Maybe I will raise the, the reservoir a little bit and it should just fit perfectly. From there on, the water will drop down into the reservoir again. And by doing so, there's something called a, water, a waterfall um, effect. So the waterfall effect is basically the falling water. Um, it's basically sucking air sucking oxygen into the water into the basin while falling so it's basically creating this suction so little bubbles can get thrown into or get can get pulled into the water basin so and therefore enriching the water with oxygen when it's going back up to the plants and basically feeding the roots of the plants with oxygen and water at the same time as well as the nutrients that will be added into the basin So that's eight or ten. So this is another ten. So probably not more than 30 liters in this reservoir, but it's definitely too little. But I think for a test run it's good enough. So let's give it a shot. Okay, I just turned it on. Pump is sucking the reservoir empty faster than I expected. So it's already running dry and the water is still flowing through the pipe. Obviously not the best thing to do to the pump. Um, as mentioned before, we have like a residual value of a, a volume of around uh, 20 liters. So that's already gone. Pump can't feed anymore. So I will have to add some more water. All right, we're back in business. Pump is running again and we're adding water again. You can see on the inside, there's a lot of dirt still in the system. Uh, come on. Uh, now we can see it uh, that we need to flush out so water is basically cycling and now we can see water actually feeding back it's still not perfect for the pump and that's kind of the problem we have uh, with those pumps that they are normally way too powerful have a way too high flow rate and therefore 
basically over flooding the whole system. Now imagine you have a lot of plants in there with a lot of roots on the, on the bottom, basically slowing down the water flow and therefore increasing or like increasing the resistance of the flow and therefore increasing the water level in the pipes. And if you then have such a high flow rate, you can see it now very nicely um, down at the bottom at the reservoir that the flow rate is immense. So the trick with those powerful pumps is basically to turn them on, turn them on for just 30 seconds, maybe one minute, to basically fill up the whole system, and then it will take some time to drain again, and then cycle this again and again. So it, it works, kinda, but uh, not perfect yet. We need more water in the reservoir, and we need, of course, uh, automation in place to have such cycles of 30 seconds, one minute, to not drain the reservoir completely and also to give the water time to distribute and spread through, through the whole system. What we could do if we would, if we don't like the level of water in the system, if it's too much water, we can adjust the water level with those reduction pieces. I can show it here at the top, maybe a little bit better. So we have those reduction pieces basically elevating the outflow and therefore preventing the water from flowing out directly. If you would have like a complete full 110 millimeter outlet here, therefore raising the water level, the residual value in the pipe to a certain level so the plants inside can never run dry in case of pump failure, electricity outage or whatsoever, the plants will not die immediately. Obviously it's not good if you're not cycling the water, but it's way better to have some water inside compared to running completely dry. So that's already nicely running, but let's take a look on how to adjust the whole system, automate the cycle time and also the level the pipes so i have a feeling that we're not really <laughs> not really level here and um, therefore obviously the water level inside the pipe will be higher at one end lower at the other end and therefore maybe in worst case accumulating too much too much water at one end or too little water in total so that's something we need to take care of not just for the water consumption or the or water we need in the system at the same time i mean that's kind of uh, not so important but also to have not the plant at one end completely sunk in water maybe getting not enough oxygen and the other one hanging high and dry so that's it's super that's why it's super important to have everything level but for now i mean this was now like one evening a quick evening obviously i had some parts uh, some spare parts some old parts that i could recycle and it's a super simple setup but and the most time intensive part drilling the holes is already done but anyhow, that's something you can easily assemble in one day, even with you no know, no prior pre-cut parts or something. One day and you're done, or half a day and you're done, and you have your own hydroponic setup in place. But I think that was all for the rig for the moment. Next step is obviously automation, planting, net cups, how to actually place the plants in the in the pipes, and that's all for next time. So that's another 10 liters later. So I couldn't leave you without showing you how the whole system will look like. While the system is still draining, I hope the noise is not too bad, I'm showing you those net cups here. So those net cups, looking like this when they are new, or more almost new, are basically the carrier of each individual plant. So they will sit, you can see they have like a little, little edge here that's shaped like the pipe. So they will sit here, sit here kind of, kind of stable and then the plant will be inside the net cup so it's not falling into the, the pipe and whatever flushing away so we can see here that the water level at the moment is actually not very high obviously it's draining already it's not touching the the bottom of the net cup let's try one at the bottom here we can see the water level is much higher it's like almost one third or one quarter in the in the water so this means that the reduction piece here at the end, and I think I can confirm this already visually, the reduction piece is on a different angle and therefore um, holding more water in the system compared to the upper level. That's also something you can do if you have like at the top maybe bigger plants with more roots and at the bottom smaller plants with little roots that need, need, really need to touch the water. That's all kind of okay. If putting in cup net cups on one end and then the other, you can also kind of check the level. You do not necessarily need to level it with a tool but that's all for later. But for the moment, just for you to understand, you have the net cup, you have the plant inside and a little bit of soil or maybe some stones or something like this or some rock rule. Actually rock rule is what is uh, working the best. So you can grow your little seedlings 
in rock wool, like a seed in, in rock wool, keeping it moist until it's uh, germinating. And then after the, you have a little sampling, putting it into the net cup or put the whole net cup with the sampling in here, and then you're ready to grow. What you can see on those here, that your biggest enemy is algae, which is basically growing as soon as you have water surfaces exposed to light. So always make sure to cover everything, shade everything. And if you have unused uh, holes or unused uh, seats, I like to call them seats, every hole is a seat. Uh, if you have unused seats, cover them with something. It could be tape, could be some cover, some, some, some plastic liner, could be a net cup that's maybe completely filled with foam or completely filled with, uh, with rock wool to basically avoid any light. Maybe rock wool or foam is not the best because you're also increasing the surface area that's humid and again, uh, encouraging algae to grow. Best thing is really to cover it or obviously perfectly, in the perfect case, you have uh, everything, every seat is, is occupied with a plant growing and you're at full capacity so that's all i think for the moment about the rig the hydroponic setup itself and yeah make sure to stay tuned to not miss how we automate and also monitor this whole system and connect it with some sensors some microcontroller to have a fully automated system and basically a machine producing leafy greens cucumbers and all that stuff right on our balcony no matter how big your balcony is or how big your space is Thanks for watching and see you next time.